Do you know ball? 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 Welcome, ladies and gents, to a new edition of the Do You Know Ball podcast. I am one of your hosts, Mr. Deej. I'm joined here with Pap. Say hi, Pap. Yes, sir. And today we are joined by a special guest. You might remember him if you're a true OG, none other than Jonathan Stevens. Say hi, Jonathan. What's good, boys? He's joining us today on number 19 of Do You Know Ball, episode 19. We're going to get right into it. As you may know, Jonathan is our football department head, so he's going to give his opinions on the NFL draft. Some hot takes, some cold takes. There's probably going to be a lot of cold takes in here today. Literally, we don't know what's coming up in this segment. This is all him. So, Jonathan, talk about the NFL draft. What do you think? Uh, I think it was pretty like one of those drafts. Everyone seemed to get who they wanted. It was like a pretty, like especially the first solid six picks. It was like a not a surprise. Everyone knew Caleb Williams was going to get drafted. Then Jade followed by Jane Daniels, Drake May, the three best quarterbacks. Then Marvin Harrison to the Cardinals, generational talent. Like he's he's going to be really good. Uh, I was a little shocked that the Chargers didn't take Malik Neighbors. Uh, I do thank them for not though, because now they're on. He's on the Giants now. We took him, but I just thought Malik Neighbors and. Justin Herbert would have been a very, very good duo uh, in the league. So uh, the big thing that everyone's been talking about, uh, the controversy, is the Falcons, after signing Kirk Cousins for four years for $140 million, drafted Michael Penix Jr., a quarterback out of Washington. I don't know what their thoughts were behind that, I don't know what their plan is with him, but you just signed a guy for $140 million and you could have got, there were plenty of, plenty of guys you could have taken. Any, anything would have made sense. A lineman, a safety, a corner, a wideout to add to, you, you already have Kyle Pitts, Bijan, Bijan Robinson, just two, two dogs. And you could have added to that. And instead you draft a guy who I assume you're not going to play after you're paying him, Kirk Cousins all that money so I don't know I don't know what what the scenario is behind the behind the curtain I don't know what their their thoughts were on that but that to me sticks out to me as uh one of the so probably the one of the worst picks of the draft who, who are your your winners of the draft who are your winners of the NFL draft I mean, everyone really wins. Like, everyone has a good draft. But I think the team that really picked it up and stands out the most is the Chicago Bears. They just got Caleb Williams. Uh, if he lives up to what he's been hyped up to be, we'll change the franchise. I mean, that's what he's been looked at. He's really good. So if he lives up to that hype, he, they could change. And they also, because the Falcons fumbled and draft the receiver, they also got Romy uh, Adunzi, I think his name is. A really good wideout, top top three in the draft. So now they have him. He's the wide receiver three after they just made all those moves in the offseason. So I definitely think the Bears have improved the most and have been one of the best standout teams coming out of the draft. Now, what about your losers? I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, anyone that really doesn't get a first, like, 10, 20 pick is, like, I wouldn't say as a loser, but like, you know, I don't like to look at it like that. I don't really look at the thing and say who lost, but you know, I think the Falcons just wasted a wasted a pick. You wasted it. You could have had a you could have waited. If you wanted a quarterback and Kirk Cousins once your guy, you could have waited another year to draft a quarterback. But I don't see what drafting what how did they get better drafting Michael Penix? I, I just don't I don't see it. All right, now, not really – well, kind of draft-related. The Chiefs, they got Xavier Mooney. I believe that's his name, yeah. right? Deal. Why Why did the Bills, first off, give me your give me your insight. Why did, oh, well, you know, I don't know. I, the Bills, like – the Bills still got Keen Coleman. You know, he's pretty solid out of FSU. Uh, I don't know why – People make these moves. I think Xavier Worthy is better than Keon Cole. Obviously, kid ran a he ran a four two forty. That's unreal. That's 
that's something you'll see. But he's like he's a he's a stud, and I think the Chiefs really, really walked out and fleeced the Bills. Okay, and one last thing: the Dallas Cowboys. I need your opinion. I need your honest opinion. What are your thoughts of them going into this upcoming season? I mean, look, they they're the same team as they were. They're they're not different. They still they do the same thing every year. They're hyped up. I'm sure they'll be good this year. Uh how they do in the playoffs though is like kind of the thing for them. They have a solid roster. Dak Prescott's still there. Uh you know, you did lose Tony Pollard to Pollard, but CD's still there. CD's gonna be good for a long time. Uh you guys have a good defense still. So like I'm not gonna I'm gonna, I'll call how it is. You guys are still solid. I still think you probably will come in second. The Eagles are made a lot of good improvements this offseason. So, yeah, I think. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Did you say he was going to win the division? I think the Eagles will win the division next year, yes. I, you know, I'm going to make a prediction for last place in the division. Yeah, the New York Giants? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You, of course. Well, I mean, I just think Daniel Jones with that. Well, first off, the roster construction is just straight up terrible. Let's start there. Um, I think Daniel Jones is not the answer there. I don't think he's either. I think, you know, what's the realistic path for the Giants in terms of a quarterback? What are they going to do? Probably Ride it out year. until his contract's no. up? Probably give him this year. See how he does. I don't know what they're going to do with – uh the veto and like whatever, if they're going to do the same thing they did last year, they just compete for a spot again. But if Daniel Jones is healthy, we'll give him the keys to the, the offense one more last time. And if it doesn't go well, draft a quarterback. Why do they do that this year? And then for the league, you can't pass on league neighbors. There really was no one. Once, once, um, Caleb Williams, uh, Drake May, and uh, the kid at LSU got drafted, it was kind of like, all right, well, you can't take, you're not going to take JJ McCarthy at. Six. You're just not. Well, uh, I mean, league neighbors. He didn't look like he wanted to be there, though. Did, did you How? see where he, he called him uh, Daniel Jones? I did, did he actually? But... He did. He called him Daniel Jones in his interview. It's, this was no, this it's... was his face the whole time. He also did say uh, in an interview that he wanted to be the next OBJ coming out of LSU and to be the receiver to. Uh, come out of there and lead the team so i think i think it's a really good step in the right direction will we be good this year no but it's a building block so sure. man um ezekiel elliott returns to the dallas cowboys championship no. move no no Nothing. i don't even know football like that as a championship well. move okay when when we're holding up the trophy right okay, you uh, we're gonna come game. back to this Zeke's going to get the game-winning touchdown off a of carry. The Dallas Cowboys are not a playoff team. Tell me about football, Zach. I, I'm, like, just like I said, I don't Tell know me. much about football, but the Dallas so Cowboys why are they not, not a playoff team. Why are they not a playoff team? Because they're not a playoff team. They choke why not? every no, single no, no, year no, no, in the playoffs. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. Tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why. They choke. Uh, the, the proof is Tell in me the why. They choke every single year Tell in the playoffs. Tell me why. What's your, favorite, what's your favorite football team? I don't really have one. I mean, oh. I, I guess I support the Giants. Next topic, guys. We're going to go on to the next topic. Okay, go ahead. Got you there. Go ahead. Get, Am I doing it? Next, yeah, go on to the next topic. Go ahead. Oh, okay. okay, okay. Go ahead. All right. Thank you, Jonathan. First off, everyone, give Jonathan a round of applause. Um, He gave his expertise. Um, Some were better than others. But let's talk about the, the next important topic. The, Bro- the Brooklyn Nets hired Jordy Fernandez to be their next head coach of the franchise. Let me give you a little bit of a background behind Jordy Fernandez. All right, he was voted the best assistant coach in the league by the players, by the other team's head coaches, by general managers. That goes a long way. The league has high respect for you. You know, you're going to be a well respected fella, right? The Aaron Fox loved him to death. Loved him. Okay. He was the Kings uh former lead assistant coach and now he's the head coach for the Brooklyn Nets. Hired Juwan Howard at uh he hired 
Jawan Howard to be a part of his staff, ex-Michigan coach, ex-Miami Heat member as well. He's Team Canada's head coach, led them to a bronze in the FIBA tournament. And on top of all this, people seem to forget that the Nets have a very bright future. Despite not having their own like unprotected draft picks, they still have a boatload of ammo, a boatload of picks to go out and potentially make a move in free agency, make a move in the trade market. They have their 2025 first, which is a swap. Suns 21, um, not 21, but you, I'm not going to list all the picks. The Nets have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 picks around that for the next four, five years. That's phenomenal. I think the only team that has more than them is Oklahoma City. The Brooklyn Nets are in a good position. Does it suck that they lost, you know, some good players over the years? Yes. But I think Jordy Fernandez is a very good development guy. He was a development coach for the Cavaliers. He can develop and reach untapped potentials for Cam Thomas, Nicholas Claxton, Dayron Sharp, Noah Clowney, Dariq Whitehead, Jalen Wilson. I'm just going down the roster. Point is, I wanted to touch on this a little bit because I think we're going to look back on this hire in a couple years. Potentially, I hope if everything goes right, we're going to look back and say we found our new Kenny Atkinson. Kenny Atkinson never should have been let go by this Brooklyn Nets team. Hopefully, and I hope that this is going to be the first of many new head coach signings. Frank Vogel might be done with the Suns, which we'll talk about later in the show. A lot of guys might be moved. A lot of guys might be fired. A lot of trade speculation. But we wanted to start off small with this. The Nets hired Jordy Fernandez. He's going to be solid. He's going to run the ship, steer the ship for Brooklyn for the next couple of years. Let's hope he leads them in the right direction. And who knows, maybe a star will join them down the line or they'll develop Cam Thomas or Macau Bridges. So that's all for this segment. I was just about to ask you that. Just because, you know, you're the expertise on the the Nets. I just wanted to get a little insight from you. Um. Do the Nets make a push at Donovan Mitchell? Absolutely. For this coming up, this offseason? Absolutely, yeah. If Donovan Mitchell, if okay, so there's a bunch of rumors. If the Cavaliers are hell-bent on trading Donovan Mitchell, I guarantee you that he's going to be a Brooklyn Net. And that's not even me just being biased. I 1,000% guarantee he's going to be a Brooklyn Net. They, first off, the Nets have been saying all along they don't want to rebuild, right? They got offered all their picks back, or most of them, for Macau Bridges, which I think they should have taken. I'm on the more rebuilds side than star hunting. So if they decline that trade to essentially get a fresh start and just do everything on your own, Sean Marks said that the whole point of the new direction is they're in Brooklyn, they're in New York. They want to attract players to come play for them. They want young guy, young guys that have good potential. Donovan Mitchell's young, still in his 20s, three, four years until he's 30. I'm not sure. He's an all-star. He had an incredible regular season. Postseason, we can debate about another time. He's going to help this Nets team a lot. And he will be a free agent in the 2025 offseason, but I don't necessarily think the Nets want to wait to get him. I think they want to make it as soon as possible, You know, trade for him this coming offseason and say they get him and he really loves it in Brooklyn, then they have an advantage because he's already played a full year for them there. And the Nets also, I believe, will have a max slot in 2025 if they play all their cards right, if they do this Nicholas Claxton contract correct, because by that time, Ben Simmons will be off the books. Probably Dorian Finney-Smith will be off the books. So there's a potential that you can have Macau Bridges, Nicholas Claxton, Donovan Mitchell, and another star from the 2025 pool of free agents and if they can get that done and you keep some young talent you sign some bench guys that's a pretty solid team championship team i don't know it depends on what star they get other than donovan mitchell because donovan mitchell cannot be your number one on a championship team but yeah yeah well, yeah dude, donovan look, mitchell he'll be a brooklyn net look it's it's gonna be it's gonna be rough for the Cavs. A rough decision to make regardless, but I feel like if they do get bounced and don't make it far in this playoffs, because they're they're currently tied with the Magic, and everybody thought everybody as we record wrote the this. Magic off. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we record this, yes, they play game five tomorrow. Um, dude, I mean, everybody wrote the Magic off completely. 
I I, I know I did. I thought it was going to be an easy, easy I agree. series for the Cavs, but Magic have fought back. They tied it. They tie the series at two. It's two apiece. Um, by the next pod, we should know. Uh, probably know the result of that series. Um, but I think if they do lose, then they're going to be even more hell bent on getting rid of Donovan Mitchell. Mm-hmm. But if they win and they make it further. Maybe they decide to keep him for next season and try to try to do the same thing again, try to look for a championship. But, you know, it could go either way. I mean, it's it's just dependent really on how they do in this current NBA playoffs. Mm. So it's, it should be interesting to to see down the line. Yeah. DJ, um, what well, you could you could introduce the next topic as well. Oh, OK. This one. Yeah. Hmm? This one. Hmm. All right. We're on the topic of basketball, we're on the topic of the NBA. Let's go ahead and talk about the potential NBA award winners. Some people have already won awards. Some people we're still waiting back on. Let's just kind of get right into it. I'm going to name the ones that won, and we'll go into a little bit of debate who we think should win the other ones. Mark Nag. Oh, my God. How do you say his last name? I have no idea. There's no help on that one. Mark Dagnio. Dagniolt. Dagniolt. I'm going to get one of these right, and then I'll just clip it on TikTok, the right one. Mark Dagniel won Coach of the Year for the OKC Thunder. Led them to the number one seed in the sorry. Led them to the number one seed in the West. I think this is well deserved. I don't even really 100%. remember. Yeah, I don't remember the other candidates, but I don't think this is a debate here. I think you know, yeah. young mm-hmm. core team took them all the way to the first seed in the in the Western Conference. And now they're they're making a push in the playoffs right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they they easily they easily uh, get out of their, their first round, and yeah. now they're gonna move on and face, I believe, either the what is it, either the Clippers or the Mavs, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Should it's be. either Clippers or Mavs. Should be. I I think they honestly have a really high chance of making it all the way to the at least the Western Conference Finals. Mm-hmm. It should be interesting for them. But yeah, go ahead. Continue. Yeah. Uh, Nas Reed won sixth man of the year. This one, a lot of people were a little a little surprised by. I'm not personally. I think that he, I think, I think he deserved it because the impact that he has on Minnesota was tremendous, right? This team is, I'm not going to say entirely different, but you have a big void if you don't have Nas Reed on this Minnesota Timberwolves team. A, the reason a lot of people thought Malik Monk should have won this award is because he has the most points off the bench this year, most assists off the bench this year, most 25-point games off the bench this year, if that means anything to you, and most clutch points and three-pointers made off the bench. So clearly, Malik Monk kind of thrived in that bench role for the Sacramento Kings. He was solid last year, had a great year this year, as you can tell, but it's a little bit up in the air. What do you think, Nas Reed or Malik Monk? Who deserved this award more? Um, I honestly, honestly, I agree with Nas Reed. I liked, I like a lot of the, I like a lot of the the things the Timberwolves are doing this year. Um, I believe he plays an important role on the team, and you know they're they're striving right now. They just uh, well, we'll get into it later. We'll get into that later. But yeah, I like a lot of the things the Timberwolves are doing this year. I think he plays an important role and helps out the squad a good amount. So. I, I do agree that Nas Reed should and did won the six men of the year award. Mm-hmm. All right. Now we'll go on to the we'll go on to the next award. Tyrese Maxey won most improved player of the year. I don't agree with this. I think this should have been Kobe's White Award. Kobe Kobe White's award. This should have been Kobe White's award. I'll tell you why. I don't have the stats in front of me. I don't know the stats I got off the, the top stats. of my head. I okay, got the perfect. stats in front of me. Go for it. Go for it. You can read them off. A a and I wanna I wanna compare this to his dramatic. I'm just gonna do go down the list, do points, rebounds, and assists. Um from the 2022-2023 season to the 2023-2024 season. So in 23, he had 9.7, he averaged 9.7 points. In 2024, that jumped up all the way to 19.1. In 2023, he averaged 2.9 rebounds. That jumped up to 4.5 rebounds per game. 
And then in the assist category, it went from 20 in 2023, it went from 2.8 to 5.1. Dramatic increase. Yeah. In just points alone, too. In just points alone. His field goal percentage went up a little bit. They 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 both stayed field goal percentage and three point percentage both stayed around the same. But to go from 9.7 points per game to 19 is an insane jump. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I I think I think Kobe White was definitely snubbed from this mm-hmm. award. I think just because Maxi took that leap to be an all star, right? They kind of favored him a little bit. But Maxi was always good, right? That's no disrespect to Kobe White, but Kobe White was not doing this. I mean, clearly, last yeah. year. clearly. I mean, Maxi, like obviously, Maxi had a little bit of a jump, but Maxi has always been good. He's always been a main piece to this uh Sixers team. Kobe White, not really. I think he really took a leap. Um, especially with DeRozan missed some time. I'm pretty sure Levine missed like close to the entirety of the year. So I and led them to the playoffs. So I, I think that this really should have been Kobe White's award, but you know, it's already been decided. So we can't really we can't speculate anymore on that one. So I'll move on to I'll move on to the next one. This is actually Jonathan's favorite player. Steph Curry won clutch player of the year. Jonathan, what do you think about that? I mean, I didn't really watch a lot of basketball this year, if I'm being completely oh, honest, but I don't see how he could have won clutch play of the year given the fact like how the Warriors did this year. That's just like I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't really. But I mean, it, it's it's tough to say. It's tough to say. You know, Curry's Curry's still one of the best players in the league currently. Um I think I think he probably won it solely off the the fact that it's it was kind of all him this year. It was either him winning games or really nothing. Um, you know, Draymond Green was in and out. He really didn't play up to the factor. He didn't. He wasn't Draymond this year. He was he got suspended. You know, there was he was contemplating um leaving, not not retiring from the game. Um. And Clay was downright awful. They didn't. They weren't the Splash Brothers this year. It was just Curry. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Wiggins wasn't how he was a couple of years prior. Even the year prior in twenty three, there's was, there's was a lot of factors on that team that did. And and I feel like, you know, even even though Mr. Jordan Poole didn't have a great year or too great of a year with Washington, mm-hmm. I still didn't really like the fact that they gave him up like that and yeah. and let him go to Washington in general I think he was a key piece to their team especially in the that championship run when they beat the Celtics mm-hmm. in uh 22 but dude I uh, there's a lot of problems I think I think that's 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 why he won it's because it was just him it was either him winning games him being on and shooting lights out and him losing games because he couldn't hit a shot. That that's that's just my take, my like kind of mindset on um that whole situation with clutch player of the year. Mm-hmm. All right. Now we're gonna get into a little bit more of a debate. Rookie of the year, Chet Holmgren or Victor Wembenyama. Dude. I mean, when you when you think of rookie of the year, most people, most people, and they go with Victor Webinyama, mm-hmm. and they would be right. Victor yes. Webinyama, I believe, is even though the Spurs didn't make the postseason, the playoffs this year, um, I do believe he was a major. I mean, dude, there was just there's just nobody doing what he's doing. And he's such a dramatic like difference maker on that team, and he's gonna be so good for years to come. Like people, this is his like like I said, he's up for rookie of the year as exactly, he should be. Yeah. This is rookie, this is his first year in the NBA. This is his first year. He's averaging twenty one points. He's getting damn near eleven rebounds per game. And not only to mention that, who is averaging uh, almost four blocks a game, along with even over a steal a game. Mm-hmm. At his size and at his position, nobody's doing that currently in the NBA. I think he's 
He's crazy. There was games where he got seven blocks in just one game, mm -hmm. which is dramatic. It's a dramatic uh, difference maker, especially when you're trying to win a, a basketball game. I think there's no competition here. Uh, although I do think Chet played a pretty big factor in helping the Thunder not only reach the number one seed, but he's helping them succeed in the in the playoffs right now. But dude, I I don't think there's really any any competition in this category. I think it's Victor Victor Webanyama, no doubt. Yeah, no, I I agree. I think his stats, his statistics are just un unleveled, and he's also up for Defensive Player of the Year, which we'll get into next. On top of that, like you kind of pointed out. This is only his rookie year. This is quite possibly the worst version of Wembenyama we're going to see, which is incredibly insane to say that. This man is could quite possibly be the face of the league in a couple years. He can shoot. He can block. For his size, 7, 4, 5, whatever he is, the Spurs, you know, very smart franchise. They always have been, always will be the best coach in the league best coach of all time, Greg Popovich, he's going to be set for decades or not. Maybe, maybe not that long. He's going to be set for a while, but yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. When Binyama should be rookie of the year, no disrespect to Chet. Now, speaking of Wemby again, defensive player of the year, when Binyama or Gobert. And I know me and you kind of have had some differences on this one. So I'll let you go first. We we've had, we've had we've some had. differences. Look, what Gobert does for that Timberwolves team is fantastic. I I like his game. I like you can count on Gobert for for to average at least two blocks. He you could count on him to get his stats. He does what he does. He doesn't get more than um maybe like a double double per night. But you you can you can count you can count on him to get stats in the categories he's good in. Now, with that being said, I still think this is no competition. I think Victor Weminyama takes this, takes it, takes his home. I think he is defensive player of the year. I think it's only because, again, like I said, there's no one in the league that is averaging four blocks per game, damn near four blocks per game. It is an insane stat. It's almost two. It, it is legitimately, legitimately two blocks ahead of Gobert. I, I really don't think that there is any dispute in this. I think just like Rookie of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year is 110% Victor Webinyama. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to have to disagree with you here on this one. Hear me out. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. The NBA does not always just look at straight blocks. Not all the time. Okay. Another thing that I think that uh, Wemby has it going against him is the fact that he's a rookie. NBA doesn't always give, sh give stuff to... NBA does not always give stuff to rookies. Okay. Another thing, Gobert's defensive impact on the Minnesota Timberwolves, without him, they would not be where they are, truthfully. Number, what, three seed in the West, a very tough Western conference, averaging what he has, and he's already, what, a three-time Defensive Player of the Year award, so they know of his resume. I think this is 1,000% going to be Rudy Gobert's award. 1,000% because of the impact that he brings to the Minnesota Timberwolves. He propels that defense to new heights. Okay, like, for example, um, they are fourth in the league in – opponent points for a second chance like does that make sense does that stat make sense yeah yeah yes mm -hmm. okay um same with opponent points in the paint they give up the second most in the entire league the minnesota timberwolves and who's that credited towards rudy gobert, rudy gobert. as opposed to the spurs they're ranked 28th in that category yeah, not not looking fantastic. There's a lot of defensive stats. Um, another one, just like straight like opponent points. I'm pretty sure um, Minnesota is sixth. So 
there's a there's a lot of more defensive metrics and a lot of more defensive stats that we can get into. I don't really know all of them, but all I know is the underlying causes, the underlying effects, the underlying stats. Rudy Gobert is going to win this award. Yeah. Okay, okay, it's fair enough. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. It now. could go. I, it really yeah. could go either way, though. Yeah, it really could. Um, now, yeah. yeah. Oh, you still saw something? Because I was no, 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 no. Go ahead. I'm just okay. saying it could go either way. Go ahead. Let's go MVP. Now we go into the big Kahuna, the big one. Who is going to be the MVP this year? Nikola Jokic. Shea just Alexander, Luka Doncic. Now, I'll, I'll, I want to speak first a little bit. I This is one of the first years where I genuinely don't know. I don't. I think usually there's always a clear-cut winner. But this year, I think you could go either way. I, I'm leaning more towards Shea or Jokic. Sorry, Luka. I just, I don't know. I kind of, my gut is telling me Jokic. And just because it's Jokic, that's what my gut is telling me. I, I don't know. But if Shea won it, I wouldn't be surprised. I just think there's so much more heat and hype around Jokic winning it than I've seen for Shea. And I think Jokic ended the regular season at number one on the leaderboard for it. And this is a regular season award, not a postseason award. So I'm going to go with Jokic. And I... I kind of hope I'm wrong because I think Shea winning it would be pretty cool. I mean, bringing the OKC Thunder to the number one team in the Western Conference had a big breakout. He's been propelling himself up the the leaderboards, you know, over the past couple of years. Um, yeah, I, I got I got I got Nikola Jokic. Yeah, man, I, dude, it, it. I agree with you. It is really going to be tough this year to decide who's going to be the the MVP of the NBA. Yes, but I think I I really hope it's I, I think I'm kind of in the same boat as you, you know, Jokic is is I there's just no words to define his game. I, I don't I've never seen a center in my lifetime do as much as Jokic does for his team. I mean, yep. he is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. He's talented. He's a leader. He is the face of the Nuggets franchise. And you know, I hats off to him. I I really I really I really think he's gonna he's gonna pull this one away. But then again, you really you really can't count out Shea. I mean, the the drastic improvement with Shea from the moment he stepped foot into the league to where he is currently in the league is is kind of unmatched. I mean, the kid is talented, and he proved that this year. I think this is one of the first years that he's actually been healthy in the NBA. One of the first years he's actually been healthy. So I really I really think that he's made a dramatic impact on that Thunder team. He took them to the one seed, to the number one seed in the Western Conference. Number one seed... Averaged, I I don't even know. I think I think Shea averaged at least 30, 30 plus uh, a game, and the assists were there, the rebounds were there. He's a dramatic, dramatically improved player since he started uh, in the NBA, and I would love to see him win it. But Jokic might be able to pull this one away again. I could see it going either way. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel with like that not really yeah. a factor. Mm -hmm. I guess with that. That ends that segment. Um, Pab, you want to go on to the next one? We got a couple more. Sure, sure. I'll I'll introduce this one. So, some WNBA news. Candace Parker has just retired from the WNBA. Now, her resume is, I mean, it, it dude, it is it is lengthy, lengthy resume. I I might not read all. That is on her resume. She played for three teams, the Sparks, the Sky, and the Aces. She's a three-time WNBA champion. She's a WNBA Finals MVP. She's a two-time WNBA MVP, seven-time WNBA All-Star. She's an All-Star Game MVP, um, seven-time All-WNBA First Team, three-time All-WNBA Second Team, Two-time WNBA All-Defensive Second Team. 
She's run rookie of the year. Uh, all WNBA, all rookie team. Uh, WNBA defensive player of the year. The WNBA assist leader. Three-time WNBA rebounding leader. I mean, all these accolades. Dude, she's she's probably going to make it. Um, She's 100% going to make it into the Hall of Fame. 110%. Yeah, she deserves it. She's she's a, she's a she's definitely a trendsetter, and definitely a person that brought a lot of light to the M- the WNBA in in any dark moment that they could have had. I mean, her her game brought a lot of attention to the WNBA, and she deserves all the accomplishments that she's earned. Uh, a fantastic player. There's nothing really much else to say for me about her other than she is she deserves everything she's got and she's one of the greatest WNBA players of all time. Mhm. That's my take on yeah. Candace Parker. I don't know mm-hmm. if you want to add anything more of the, it's um, probably just going to be more of the same. But. Yeah, you know, like definitely one of the greatest uh WNBA players of all time. Great resume, great career. Kind of ring chase a little bit at the end, but who can blame her, you know? She's gonna probably move into a little bit more of a broadcasting career. She's kind of been doing it already. Yeah. Um, so she's pretty solid at it. So she's pretty good at it. You know, I don't I don't ever mind, you know, hearing hearing some takes on the TNT crew and you know, Candace Park is there, you know, with the boys. So it's always cool. So congrats to her for a great career. Um, I wish her the best wherever she's doing. With that, do we go to the next topic? Yeah. Do you oh. want to introduce this or do you want oh, of course? I'm gonna, I'm gonna okay. This. What, go what ahead. are you doing? Of course I'm go ahead. No, one. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? First off, just want to say some words. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. While okay. you while you get that set up, it, this is gonna be this is gonna be a good uh good little segment here. Okay. Good little segment here. Remember, go I don't ahead. know if you guys you guys remember. When I mentioned we're going to talk about the Suns, uh, a little bit later in the podcast, well, that that they that moment has come. Go ahead, Deej. Do I do it? Is the question. Go ahead, do it. Should I do that? I'll save it. Maybe I don't know. Let's talk about the Phoenix Suns, everyone. As we record this, last night, the Phoenix Suns just got swept by the Minnesota Timberwolves. What does this mean? For the Phoenix Suns. I'll tell you what it means. It means. Ooh. There's a, okay, there's a lot of pressure on me to really nail this segment. I don't know. Look, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna be tame. I'm gonna be be tame. I'm just gonna speak from the heart. Okay, because I gotta I have to be somewhat unbiased a little bit. Okay, everyone. The Brooklyn Nets. No, sorry. The Phoenix Suns just got swept by the Minnesota Timberwolves in the NBA playoffs for nothing. Big quattro E zero. Okay. Get the brooms, everyone. Broom. Oh, okay. Get the brooms. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. I don't know. If I, I, you want to continue. But I, I do have some choice words to say about Yeah, you should probably do this I'm one. Saying, you know what? You're gonna be tame. And you know what? I'm gonna pick up the slack where it's needed. The the Phoenix Suns are absolutely fucking terrible. They, they are, terrible. are screwed. They are terrible. All that, all that for nothing. For nothing. The past couple of years, you bring Kevin Durant. You had Kevin Durant to a squad. To a squad that originally had, uh, dude, talent up the ass. Devin Booker, DeAndre, and Durant. I don't even remember who else, on, else was on the squad. It doesn't, doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. This year, you have Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal. You downgrade for some reason to Nurkic. I guess he had a better year, though, this year than Aiton. doesn't really matter. You had a super team, although outside of your starting lineup, you didn't really have much, but 4-0, Anthony Edwards spit in the Suns' face. Spit in the Suns' face. He did the DX uh, 
suck whatever explicit thing after after they after their win. He he literally looked at Durant. And you know what? Early on in the series, I thought after he looked at Durant and started smiling and talking talking shit to Durant, I thought maybe, just maybe, because we know the type of player that Durant could be and has the potential to be, to rise to the occasion, to fight back, to try to battle back and win a bunch of games. He Durant did nothing. Nothing. He swallowed his old ass down to a shrivelly little worm. Shrivelly little worm. An insect that was stomped on. He was awful. He was awful. He did not rise to the occasion. The Phoenix Suns did not rise to the occasion. And they are now going to take a trip to Cancun. Go ahead, Deej. I'll let you have your okay. day in the sun. Okay, 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 yeah. All right, so I'm I'm gonna be not so nice anymore. The Phoenix Suns. Oh, you said you said the F word. I could say the F word too, right? Both fucking ahead. The, the Phoenix Suns are brutally fucked. Hard F, fucked. Capital F, fucked. They 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 dug themselves in a hole that they cannot. Who would have thought the Brooklyn Nets trading away Kevin Durant? They would come out on top. They would look like the Kings. They they look like um Tony Soprano right now. They're they're running the show. This is the greatest. Okay, as a Brooklyn Nets fan, I'm not even talking as like like a sports show person anymore. I'm talking as a Brooklyn Nets fan. Kevin Durant, burn in hell. Go fuck yourself. You are not good person. You're not a good person. Okay, you left a good situation in Brooklyn. Okay, oh, Kyrie requested out. Okay, guess what? Damian Lillard requested out a couple months after. If you kept your ass in Brooklyn, Damian Lillard would be a, a net right now. If you really wanted Bradley Beal, Bradley Beal would be a net right now. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. But no, you went to Phoenix. You took away Every little bit of life they had, Mikal Bridges, Cam Johnson, DeAndre Ayton, Chris Paul, every little life they had, all of their first round picks, everything. They they planted a beautiful lemon tree and you flew to free you, you flew to Phoenix and, and you picked each lemon off one by one and you stepped on each of the lemons. That's what you did. You deserve this for trying to ring chase. You built this roster. You pushed for the front office to trade for Bradley Beal. You pushed the front office to get Royce O'Neal. You pushed the front office to deplete every asset you had to make this roster better. You constructed this roster, and you, your roster, just got swept in the first round of the NBA playoffs. What was supposed to be the most broken big three of all time just got swept by Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, Jaden McDaniels. Know his name. Know, know his, his name. name. Know his Jayden name. Nikhil, Nikhil Alexander Walker. Know his name too. You, you. There's no coming back from this if I'm Kevin Durant. There, there's no coming back. The only way you win a championship at this point is in, in your career is if you go back to Golden State. That's my honest to God opinion. You, you want to win a championship? If you really, you know, you don't care about what fans are saying about you, go go call Curry up and be like, yo, I made a mistake. I need to go back. You can call Joe Sy. Look, I'm Joe Sy. Ooh, call from Kevin Durant. Hang up. We don't want you. You had your chance. You could have built something special in Brooklyn, but you're gone. We're better off without you. We have your entire future. We're going to get Donovan Mitchell. We're going to get Lori Markin in. Who knows? I don't know. I'm just naming someone from 2025. We're going to use all your picks. We're gonna build something special while you rot in hell. You burn. Go plant another lemon tree. Go go burn another apple tree. Okay. The Suns at the moment, by the way, no picks, no second rounders, no first rounders. They're over the tax limit by bajillion amount. They have no access to the lid, the mid level exception, which means you can sign like a free agent for five million dollars, depending on your uh, salary cap, whatever. You. I don't know. I'm reading this. I'm reading this article. Point is, they suck. You, you have nowhere to go. Matt Ishbia, the new owner, that's the new owner syndrome, okay? Brooklyn did it a while ago when they traded for Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett. They're, they're fucked. You, you can't get out of this hole unless you trade Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal. No one's going to want Bradley Beal because of his contract. 
Okay, I'm gonna let Zach go. He looks like he wants to say something. Go for it, Zach. Dude, okay. Another thing I want to mention about this bum, Kevin Durant. Yes. Is I so I work, obviously, you know, I work with Hoops Habit and I, yes. I write articles. Yes. And I saw someone wrote an article on Kevin Durant today or today or uh, two days ago. It was on Kevin Durant and a possible reunion with OKC. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Now, I don't know how how much evidence, how much information is there to back that up. But, dude, if you make it public that you want to go back to OKC now that they're a first-place team in the Western Conference, dude, dude, that is the lowest thing I think an NBA player could possibly do. You left them. You left them to ring chase. And then now you want back because they're actually good, because they're actually better than the current team that you are on. It's comical. That you are on. You did you did that with OKC in the beginning. You left. You left. You ring chased. You went to uh, to Golden State. You won two rings in Golden State. Congratulations. Hats off to you. Congrats. Then you went to the Nets. You wanted a fresh start. You wanted to bring championship fever to the Nets organization. How'd that work out? It didn't. You didn't like it, so you left again. You left for the second time. You left the team for the second time to ring chase. Then you went to the Suns, and my God, I mean, we know how that went. It didn't go. It didn't do anything. You didn't do nothing. There is nothing that you have done currently that has made any difference or brought the Suns any closer to winning an NBA championship. In fact, I think you pointed them in the opposite direction. They are regressing. You mentioned, Deej, all those things, how they're screwed, how they have nothing. They have nothing else to go off of. This is why you are, if there's a person to go to a super team, you're a super team wrecker. You're a super team wrecker. You destroy everything around you. And then when you're done with the team and you feel like you can't give anything else to the team, you just quit on them and you go somewhere else, somewhere else to ring chase yet again. You have not proven to us that you can win a championship on a team on your own without any help of any big stars, any big stars. You couldn't even do it on the nets. The nets were stacked. The Knicks had James Harden, they had Kyrie Irving, and they had Kevin Durant all on the same team, and nothing happened. You couldn't even win then. Then you we were we were hurt. Uh, yeah, granted, but I'm saying you get you get the, you get the point. I'm trying to say you get the point. I'm trying to say you get the trend that I'm trying to say. The only super team he's won with was that Golden State Warriors team. So again, like you said, I agree. Go back to Golden State. See if you can win again. That's all I gotta say about Kevin Durant. You are the biggest fraud in all of basketball, Kevin Durant. You have done nothing on your own. You have shown you cannot lead a team. You need to go where there is a bigger star. You need to go back to your daddy, Steph Curry. That's what you need to do. You're done. I'm sorry. You want to go to the Miami Heat? I'm seeing it be reported. Whatever. I don't know. Whatever. Go ring chase elsewhere, okay? Whatever team wins the East, I expect Kevin Durant to be on that team. Boston Celtics. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. The question is, do they trade Kevin Durant this offseason? I don't think so. It depends if Kevin Durant actually asks out. But who cares? Go burn in hell, Kevin Durant. You deserve every bit of it. Yep. Okay. Last topic of the night. We're going to make it quick. I feel, I feel like we shouldn't even do this, but we're going to we're gonna do it anyways. I felt yeah. like we should have ended on Durant and that rant. But we're going to do it anyways real quick. Just a quick little update. The Knicks won game four in uh, Philadelphia. They are now 3-1 and one in the series, and probably the next time you we check in with you guys, we do another episode, we will see the Knicks moving on to the next round because they are not going to lose. I, I called it from the beginning. The Knicks have been really, really good in the series. They showed a lot of promise. I think, I think truthfully... Now, uh, many, many Knicks fans, many people may disagree, but truthfully, my take on this team, I think they're honestly better 
without Julius Randle. And that may be controversial, but dude, they they this team, this current Knicks team is all about spreading love and passing the ball. Even when Jalen Brunson was down and, and didn't have two great games in the series, they didn't have the best games. Other people stepped up. Josh Hart has been terrific. Many Dante DiVincenzo has been terrific. Mitchell Robinson, a lot of people on this team has been terrific. Deuce McBride has been outstanding. A lot of people on this team have been really, really good and have led this team to where they are now. Now, that being said, Jalen Brunson went off in game four. He, had, he, he just took everything that Embiid did. Embiid gave him a little shove. Okay, I'm going to show you what I'm made of. Drops 47 on your dome. On your dome. And you got your own fans booing you out of the stadium. Cheering when you miss a free throw. And then after the game... Now, this is... I don't agree with this. I don't agree, I don't agree with this. I don't think it's a sportsman-like. It's cool to chant and and support your team as much as possible. I don't think this was cool. There was uh Knicks fans put a Knicks jersey over over top of the Wilt Chamberlain mm-hmm. statue once the game was finished. I don't think that was classy. I don't think that was that was a smart move. Uh, I didn't I didn't like that. I didn't like that. You should never never put anything or do anything to disturb um any of the great statues outside of stadiums. You know what I mean? Like it that that's just not right. I don't I don't agree with that. But besides that, great game for the Knicks. Hopefully by the next time we come on the pod, they they will be moving on to the second round and Embiid will be out of the playoffs yet again because Embiid can never ever perform in the playoffs. One thing before 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 we get into this even more. I wish I had the stats pulled up. I really really do, but I believe Embiid's fourth quarter stats in these games have been absolutely atrocious. I don't know if did you want to find it real quick, if you can Please. even find it. His fourth quarter stats are unbelievably bad. All time or just this year? Just this year. His his fourth quarter stats have been terrible um in this series against the Knicks. And it's and it's honestly a, a major reason as to why they've been losing and why they're probably going to be bounced in the upcoming days. Did you got it for us? I do have it. Okay, ahead, so Joel, it Joel Embiid, according to Stat News, Joel Embiid has averaged 6.8 points, 1.8 assists, and 0.8 steals in four games in the fourth quarter in the 2024 Eastern Conference first round. He's been awful. He's been awful. And you know what? If you want to move on, if you want to ring, win a ring with Philadelphia, Joel Embiid, you got to step up to the plate. You've stepped down completely. You've showed nothing. You've showed nothing. You've been in the league for a while now. You should know what it takes at this point to win an NBA championship, and yet you can't do it. You can't even make it past. I. You can't even make it past the first couple rounds. You can't make it past the first round this year. Come on. Do better. Be better. I don't know what's going to happen in years to come, but all I could say is be better. With that being said, that about wraps up our yeah. episode for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed as much as we have. It's been a fun one, and we will catch you guys in the next episode of the Do No Ball podcast.